it's an amalgam of all art forms. It sort of brings literature, writing, theater, movement, dance, sound, music, into this marriage of all these other artistic expressions. All of those aspects make it sort of an exceptional experience. There was a movie that did change my life because it made me more interested in filmmaking and therefore it led to my possibility of becoming a filmmaker. And that was a movie by Sergei Eisenstein called Alexander Nevsky. And I saw it accidentally. Of course, there's no such thing as accidents, but nevertheless, I did. Um, I was studying the Russian language in the summer in my ninth grade uh, school that I went to in New York City was teaching Russian for the first time. And the teacher would take us to lots of experiences to learn the languages, from going to strange cafes that were old Russian, white Russian cafes, uptown New York, smoke filled like a Dostoevsky novel, to going to movies. And on a double bill, the second movie was this black and white masterpiece, and I literally was just, it was like somebody, had, it's like like the, the Plato's cave idea, somebody had taken me outside to see the sunlight. I'd never seen anything like this before, ever. And if you know the movie, it has this incredible score by Prokofiev, uh, the images that Sergei Eisenstein, who was this great graphic artist, that were are just so arresting, that I literally asked, who made this? It was the first time I'd ever even thought, because I was not a film buff. I wasn't interested in movies when I was a kid. I was nothing like many of the students that I teach that who at the age of two and a half were making movies. This is not part of what I was interested in at all. I was interested in animated cartoons because I'm a graphic artist, but that was it. This suddenly made me interested in movie making. I think my audiences uh, depend on the nature of the film. Uh, I think there are three audiences, particularly if you're making a movie that's about a social subject. I'm making this movie called Shot, which is about the consequences of being shot in three people's lives. Who's that movie audience going to be? Um, I suspect initially it's going to be for the choir. That is, those people who are really concerned with the issue of gun violence in America. I don't think it's going to be for those people who think anybody who discusses this is a, an enemy of America. So there's the choir. That's the people who already are inclined to want to get more support on their particular point of view. There's the opposition that uh, doesn't want to hear it or see it. And then there's most of us in the middle who are sort of undecided. So oftentimes the movie is made, or at least if I'm having any thought about this, that for both the choir and the undecided. Um, but it again depends on what the nature of the movie is. Uh, if I'm making a movie that's part of, uh, 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 that wants to inform, it may very well be wanting to inform a specific audience. Study who you are, learn about the world around you, steep yourselves in as much art and experience of life that you can get so that you can then gain some insight onto who you are, how you feel about what happens to you and the people around you so that you actually might have something to say. Um, so live and create. Um, I'm very worried about the word pride. It's not one of the seven sins that I'm really particularly happy about, and I think it's one of the ones to be avoided. Um, there are projects that I've made in the past that feel good to even look at in the present. A couple of them being shown at IU right now, which is The Chosen and uh, The Journey of Natty Gann. Uh, a movie I made called Conspiracy, The Trial of Chicago 8 is a movie that I feel is of value still today. So those have good feelings to them. The movie I'm making right now, um, who knows what it's going to be. You know, it's in the process of making and movies are evolutionary. But um, I'm excited about its potential of making contribution to the issue of gun violence in America. Um, uh, there's an animated film that I'm also making right now based on a Tolstoy short story that I also have feeling it's uh, it talked about the interconnectedness of everything and I feel like that may also be something so that there's excitement about things I'm doing versus sort of not satisfaction but a certain kind of uh, um, 
pleasure in the knowledge that they still have some relevance of some of the movies that I made in the past. A movie I made called Catherine, starring Sissy Spacek, that was about the 60s uh, radicals. I also feel this is like a movie that really has value even now. I think it's essential to have a good cinema program on any university because this is the media of our times. And to understand how they're made, well, that's sort of more of a production issue, uh, is a value it, it, to train people to be able to actually make movies well, but also to examine their place in our culture and their significance. And this obviously covers all moving media, from games to any form of television to anything that's on the digital networks. Um, this is our way of relating to each other. And oftentimes, we do it without understanding it. So academia itself is a place for reflection and examination and new discovery. And I feel it's essential that we be, be making that part of all curricula so that we can begin to understand it better, take more responsibility for it, and you know, when it goes in detrimental directions, which, for example, has happened, I think, to particularly uh, um, uh, media journalism, which is cinema as well, I mean, it's media, we need to re-examine that and we need to do something about it. And the only places that are going to make those changes are going to be the loud voices that come from um, the vanguard of our educational spaces, which is colleges and schools.